Hey, mis compas, what's up? Welcome back to a new episode of this, your daily newscast about narcos, news about narcos, as usual, and every morning from Monday to Friday. My name is Luis Chaparro, and I'm here to bring you some of the most compelling, interesting news, but also some opinionated uh, information about these criminal organizations operating in Latin America and probably beyond. Sometimes we cover Europe, sometimes we cover the US, sometimes we cover the border. All the news that I bring you here every single morning are meant for you to keep informed and to make informed decisions coming up to the future. Either it be how to travel to Mexico, how to deal with drug dealers, uh, even inside the US or whatever in Europe or whatever you are, how to uh, make an informed voting, and of course, I think most importantly, how not to get deceived by all the scammy information around the globe. So yes, guys, welcome to this Wednesday. We have some interesting headlines, some crazy videos I'm going to show you today, and some sad news coming out from one of Mexico's most touristy beaches. And um, before we go right into it, guys, please hit the subscribe button. I, I'm seeing that uh, a large audience of you guys are not subscribed to this channel. Share these videos so we can get more audience and we can grab more attention coming up through this channel. Comment below. And of course, if you can, make a donation through the super thanks, super like button or hitting the uh, show your support for Luis Chaparro button on my live webcast. Um, all of your donations are really appreciated. This is what is uh, keeping me, you know, um, alive with this project. And also thanks to the guys of Three Fert Furniture. If you haven't uh, see what they do, they do these beautiful tables right on my left and other uh, nightstands. Good quality, good stuff coming out from El Paso, Texas, but shaping worldwide. Again, thank you guys for showing up this morning. Duncan Patterson, good morning, brother. Alonso Torres, saludos, carnal. Giorgio Langley, good day from Australia. Hey, man. Hello all the way to Australia. Quería. Hey, Luis from New Zealand. Hello, guys, to New Zealand. I'm seeing a lot of people um, joining in from that part of the world, which is crazy and interesting. Um, Ber Ramirez, what's up, my man? Buenos dias desde Yuma, Arizona, JC. Buenos dias, carnal. All source new. Yo, brother, great to see you here, man. I'm pretty sure that you know what we're going to be talking about this morning and opening this uh, live um, broadcast with Daniel Guzman. Um, you need to go to Europe and do some reports on drugs around there. Dude, I would really love to, to go to Europe. I think Europe is becoming or has become already one of the major hubs for drug traffickers, for Latin America drug traffickers. I think the next war, it's not going to be through different factions of Mexican drug cartels. I think it's going to be mostly like Mexican criminal organizations, um, Latin American, talking about like South American criminal organizations, fighting over Europe, but that's remained to be seen. T.Y. Golden, good morning. Julian Rivas, should research what's happening in Guerrero. Giorgio Langley, who is small face behind figure behind you? This little dude right here, that's Jesus Malverde. I'll give you a tour of the studio eventually on my Instagram. If you haven't followed me there, um, go on my Instagram. I post a lot of stuff uh, every, every day, mostly um, on the behind the stories, um, uh, the story shit. Uh, good morning, Rafael. And also, for those of you guys who are watching these uh, while it's not live, I'm seeing a lot of you guys are showing up to these videos after it premieres live um, and probably not understanding how this goes and not understanding why I'm putting a countdown at the beginning, why am I doing all these uh, interaction with the people that are joining us on, on the live chat. This is mostly a daily live cast that eventually can be seen as a replay on my channel. And also, if you guys go to Luis Chaparro Clips, I usually break down different clips from the different segments on this live cast. So, guys, I don't want to take too much of your time to begin with. So, let's get it right. Um, let's go to Nuevo Laredo, right across Texas, a Mexican city known for widespread violence, mostly by different um, factions of the Cartel del Golfo. 
Let's watch this video. I want to show you a video that you're going to find interesting, probably shocking, probably not, but I want to hear your opinion on it. So let's, 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 let's roll this video. So what, what we're watching on screen, what we watch on screen is a video obtained by El País, which is um, this um, good, good uh, source of news from Spain covering also the Americas. And they managed to get a hold of a video showing some unlawful killing by the Mexican army. Now, this is what troubles me about what happened here. First of all, what troubles me is this has been widely known only by rumor, right? That the Mexican army will kill civilians, either they belong to the criminal organizations or not. And then they will put arms on them and alter the scenes to make it look as a shootout. This has been happening a lot, especially in the um, northeastern part of Mexico. Now, the other thing that troubles me is that what do you do in a place that is absolutely overtaken by these criminals? These guys, allegedly, first had a shootout with the Mexican army before crashing their vehicle and then getting the, um, the, the, uh, the Mexican army show, showing up. And then it looks like when they're grabbing... The, the, the civilians, the armed civilians out of the, of the pickup truck, they take out a heavy weapon, looks like a, a 50 caliber, could be mistaken, but then again, th that's what it looks like. And then it seems that they got fire from someone else, probably some more people trying to um, rescue those guys. But then after that, we see some of the Mexican army members shooting to the side where the um, armed civilians are lined up against a wall. Allegedly, what the article says is that the army literally shot dead uh, or executed these guys when they were actually unarmed. I mean, while they were lined up, they didn't have arms on them. Then they removed handcuffs, some of them had, and then they put weapons on them, on their bodies, to make it look like it was a gunshot. This, this is troubling. This is troubling for all sides. This is troubling for civilians, because then it means that we're now facing another criminal power with, um, with uniform, right? The Mexican army. I mean, it's going to be super easy for them to shoot me in the head and then put an arm 
on my hands and say like, dude, he was armed, he was shooting at us. Then again, how are you going to believe them when they call some of these criminals criminals? If they say, these guys were cartel members, we're going to be super doubtful in the future. We can't rely on our own authorities even when they're doing a good thing. But also, on the law enforcement side of it, it's like, what do they do? If they, if they grab him, take him to, to jail, well, they, they were going to have to st stay there until the investigator showed up from the Fiscalia, the Ministeriales, do an investigation of what really happened, and then, like in many other cases, if these guys talk to human rights and say, like, they, these guys beat the, the, the shit out of us and stuff, then probably they're going to walk out. And again, they're going to have a small group of heavily armed people out in the streets. So what are, are they even doing out in the streets, right? So this is, this is an example of what is happening in Mexico. It's like three different eyes through three different perspectives in a no-win situation. We're watching the army faking shootouts, but actually doing some work against the criminals. We're, we're watching the criminals calling the human rights and then getting released out of the streets. And as a civilians, we can't believe or trust any of those two sides as being sided with us. Let's go and read the, um, the article by our good friend Pablo Ferri. Video shows apparent extrajudicial killings by the military in Mexico. Video footage from a security camera shows a new case of alleged abuse against five civilians in Nuevo Laredo, in Mexico's no northern state of Tamaulipas. The images show that the victims were apparently killed by members of the military. The footage, dated May 18, shows soldiers pulling civilians out of a pickup truck that has just crashed into a wall following a street chase. Some of the civilians are carrying weapons. The soldiers disarm the men, kick them, and place them next to the wall. Minutes later, in a confusing scene, the military appears to be sheltering from something while shooting at the civilians. The only survivor later died in the hospital. The images to which El País has had access show how the soldiers also altered the scene of the crime afterwards. In the footage, one of them grabs a long weapon with a red bag or cloth to avoid touching them with his hands and leaving fingerprints, then places them next to the corpses. Later, another soldier, another soldier notices that one of the bodies is still wearing handcuffs. He asks another soldier for the key, and then they remove the cuffs. In between, paramedics arrive to take away one survivor, who died later in the hospital. It was hours before representatives from the prosecutor's office showed up. The officer in charge of the military convoy, Infantry Lieutenant Jose Luis N., signed the report that was filed with the Mexican Attorney General's office in charge of the investigation. In the report, of which this newspaper has a copy, the lieutenant states that he and his men were disarming the civilians when some of the latter's colleagues showed up and began shooting at them in an attempt to rescue their own personnel. According to this official, the military responded with gunfire of their own. Meanwhile, the detained civilians were trying to recover their weapons according to this version of events. When the shooting was over, the soldiers realized that four of the five detainees were dead and one more was in critical condition as a result of crossfire. The lieutenant's version contrasts with the video where no other civilian truck can be seen near the spot or nor anyone shooting other than the soldiers. At one point, it seems that the military are trying to take refugee for something, but then it is not possible to see whether they are being shot at. In the report for the prosecutor's office, the lieutenant says that upon further inspection of the spot, two vehicles left behind by organized crime were found on the same avenue in a northern direction. Inside the two armored vehicles, the soldiers found long weapons and a 50 caliber rifle capable of piercing through armor. The footage shows at least three soldiers shooting at the five unarmed civilians next to the wall. One out of the five wriggles on the ground as if he, was, uh, if he were trying to flee. He seems injured and he is blindfolded. Seconds later, he stops moving. El País contacted a spokesperson for the Ministry of Defense, Edena, to find out if the agency has taken any action over what happened. Initially, there was no response. In the evening, Sedena released a statement saying, this agency is cooperating with the FGR in order to establish the corresponding responsibilities. The statement goes on to say, 
Mexican society can be assured that there is no impunity in the conduct of military personnel, nor will any conduct contrary to the rule of law be tolerated. This incident is reminiscent of another one that took place in February in the same city, in a neighborhood known as Cabazos Lerma. The military assassinated five unarmed young men and badly wounded another. The group was heading home after spending time at a nightclub. A seventh young man who was unarmed later said, unharmed later said that the soldiers had shot at them for no reason as they were returning home. This witness also said that the military shot one of his friends who was badly wounded as he was getting out of their vehicle and when the uniformed men clearly had the situation under control. The February case received extensive media coverage because of several videos in which relatives of the victims were seen confronting the military as the latter um, guarded the scene. Some soldiers fired into the air or at the ground. Civilians managed to knock down several soldiers and kick them. The scenes illustrated the consequences of the covert war being waged for years in Mexico's northern border. The military's propensity for being trigger happy, if it was not something worse, had fatal, fatal consequences. When the case came to the attention of Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador, he avoided talk of an undeclared war in the territory and instead supported the theory of an isolated bet, trying to distance himself from the two previous governments under whose terms there were dozens of cases of extrajudicial killings, torture and forced disappearances perpetrated by members of the Navy and the Army. López Obrador usually frames such cases as one of mistakes. The video step by step. The video footage from May 18, shows the final part of a persecu persecution that began after 2.30 p.m. when Lago Chapala Street and Monterrey Avenue, between Lago Chapala. In the south of this border city, the video begins when a dark pickup truck is seen speeding down Monterrey Avenue and crashing into a wall, just below a shopping center security camera. It's 2.36 p.m. after the crash, soldiers appear on foot, pointing at the truck, a military vehicle known as the Sankat, a kill a kind of small suburban tank. It's providing backup. The Sankat hits the passenger door and the rear door, preventing anyone from getting out there. Meanwhile, soldiers take out the driver and his companions from the driver's side. Some are wearing bulletproof vests and carrying long weapons. The military take the guns away. Some soldiers shoot, apparently at the ground. Stunned from the car crash, the men seem somewhat disoriented. The soldiers restrain them and several also kick them. In this report, Lieutenant Jose Luis N indicated that one of them had, had, an, had an explosive exposed head wound due to the car crash. Then the confused episode begun, begins. The Sankat leaves the premises and heads north. At least eight soldiers remain with the detainees. They are close to them and kick them from time to time. It's 2.45 p.m. Suddenly, everyone gathers around the civilian truck, some on the driver's side and others on the passenger side. It is possible to see shots hitting the ground some 15 meters from them, but it's not clear if they are coming from their own weapons or from someone else's. Most go over to the passenger side, except one who remains on the driver's side a few meters from where the civilians are. In the images, he is seen shooting at the detainees several times from the other side of the truck. Two other soldiers fire their long weapons at them. It is that one of the five civilians tries to flee, crawling on the ground. His face is covered with a bandage. Several of the military shot at him, and he stops moving. The rest do not move, but lie motionless next to the wall. Minutes later, the army sandcast shows up again a few hundred meters further away on Monterrey Avenue. No other vehicles are visible nearby. It's 2.48 p.m. Everything has happened in just 12 minutes. Five minutes later, one of the soldiers walks to the back of the truck facing the avenue. He picks up a red cloth or bag lying nearby on the ground. He pauses for a few seconds because four or five cars are going by on the avenue. The soldiers gesture for them to leave. When no one is passing by, the soldiers grab a rifle, holding it with a bat. He walks over and places it next to the body of one of the dead civilians. Immediately afterwards, he repeats the operation. He returns to the truck, takes another rifle, and leave it, leaves it next to the body of another of the dead. In the next few minutes, everyone seems already calm. They are sitting or leaning between the truck and the wall. One of the soldiers seems injured, leaning against the right front of the tire truck. His companion seemed to be consoling him. In his report, Lieutenant Jose Luis N. stated that this man is a surgeon who was in charge of the vehicle's machine gun, presumably the Sanka. According to this account, the surgeon was injured by splinters in the face as a result of impacts that hit the cartridge box of the machine gun. Paramedics on scene. 
At 3.01 p.m., the Sankara approaches the crash site, accompanied by at least three military vehicles. It parks next to the bushes and stays there. Five minutes later, one of the soldiers standing next to the civilian van takes a package from the back seat and gives it to a colleague who has a cigarette in his mouth. The latter grabs it and leaves the scene. Immediately afterwards, a group of five soldiers, presumably feeling, feeling safe due to the presence of the military trucks, approach the buddies on the ground. They touch two with their feet. One of them seems to be still alive. Seconds later, the soldiers walk away. At 3.14 p.m., one of those two men on the ground, dressed in white, is seen moving his arms. No one approaches the dying man. He moves his arms, his feet, while the soldiers look at him from a distance. They seem to realize that they have made a mistake. The soldier who previously placed weapons near the bodies also left one near the wounded man. But the civilians seem to have no strength left for anything. At 3.17 p.m., six soldiers approach him, one carrying a black backpack, backpack, another taking aim at him, just in case he grabs the rifle. But he doesn't. It's not clear what comes next. In his report, Lieutenant Jose Luis N. says that a military doctor administered first aid to the wounded man, and that meanwhile they call an ambulance. The statement says that the medical vehicle arrived at 3.45 p.m. By then, the soldiers have already cordoned off the scenes with yellow tape. The ambulance arrives and four paramedics take the wounded civilian away to the stretcher. Later, they found another truck on Arandillo Street. The military found nothing inside that one, but it had bullet holes. The lieutenant's report says that those drugs were the ones that were trying to rescue the five detainees, detained civilians. The report states that at that moment, after 4 p.m., they called the FGR's office in Nuevo Laredo to report the matter. While they waited, the military tried to clean up any trace of wrongdoing. At 40.28 p.m., one of the soldiers notices that one of the four dead civilians left by the wall is wearing handcuffs. He asks for the keys and takes off the cuffs. Another soldier watches. After a while, experts and prosecutors from the FGR arrive at the scene. This case made waves in Laredo, not because of the possible execution, but because of the number of alerts. It generated on social media that day. A street action that ended with the car crash and the alleged killings rocked to the south of the city. In videos shared on social media, local residents are seen lying on the ground. That's ring from the bullets. Mayor Carmen Canturosas asked the population not to leave their homes or workplaces. As usually happens in these cases, the noise subsided into a subsequent silence from authorities. So crazy, crazy developments. There is a lot of lying from everyone. What will these armed civilians say if they were alive? What would they say? They will probably say something like, we're doing nothing, we stopped, and this guy literally started shooting at us. Yesterday, we talked about how people are fed up by gangs in places like Haiti and several other places in South America. Well, the same case is happening in Mexico. Some of you threw in some question talking about how the Mexicans should be responding back to the cartels, which, which is basically impossible. But this is troubling for also another two reasons. One is this is going to have a wide, widespread opinion uh, from Mexican civilians saying, dude, this is what you got to do. Take him out. We don't give a shit, right? Now, us as journalists, we need to get to the truth of it. And the truth of it is like, yes, Mexico is facing a, an ugly war with, the, with a white presence of um, our men, of cartel members, right? But the army needs to comply. But in order to the army to comply, we need to have a state of law, right? We need to have a proper institution that takes these men into jail. Imagine this happening in the U.S., right? Our men should, uh, should have the, uh, the um, National Guard somehow. Somehow they survive. Some, somehow the, the National Guard, they don't respond with a, a riddle of, of bullets. They get stopped. Probably they're going to be in jail for a good while. Well, this is not happening in Mexico, right? First of all, the Mexican army is between two troubled opinions, right? The Mexican um, army's top chief is the Mexican president. And he's... Uh, theme has been, his motto has been, abrazos no balazos, right? Hugs, not bullets. But again, these guys are, are facing a real and very dangerous threat out in the streets. If they're sent to a um, war zone, imagine a soldier being sent to Middle East, a war zone, and then being asked not to shoot their arms. I mean, 
they have all the right to quit, right? They have all the right to say like, you know what? I don't give a shit. I'm not going to be at a war with my gun if I, if I can't use it against these criminals. Again, my opinion is these guys are criminals. We watch them. We watch the, the, the guns they have. If the news articles for the sake either of journalism or of public opinion are not going to state that these guys were not, we, 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 don't, we can't call these guys armed civilians. These are cartel members. These are criminals. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put a step forward and say these guys were absolutely criminals. Well, the Mexican army members were also criminals, right? What they're doing is absolutely criminal. Putting guns on dead bodies, handcuffed men, this is absolutely unacceptable. But again, what is the answer around this problem that we have in Mexico? Should these guys uh, be let go just to be I mean, put out on the streets again? And then the soldiers are going to face retaliation back again? They've been fighting these guys forever. Now, this article calls the army happy trigger. They're when you are in a place like Nuevo Laredo, and you have a tag on you because you are the Mexican army, you have uniform, you have the, 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 the uh, military vehicle, you're a target. You're not happy trigger. I'm probably sure that you're trying just to defend your life. When they talk about this other incident that happened in, in February, on February, well, yes, first the public opinion wanted to place these kids as innocent guys who were just having fun at a nearby bar. Turns out, most of those guys were sicarios uh, under the um, service of the Cartel del Golfo, right? They were, some of them were, were posting photos with have heavy weapons and uh, Cartel del Golfo, um, yes, po uh, letters and shit, like propaganda, right? So this is, I mean, this is problematic. And the, the second thing that is problematic to Mexico is that Mexico is giving all of its trust, all of its money, a little bit of power to the Mexican army. And this is going to begin a heavy backlash against uh, the Mexican new project, which is the army. Mexico handed over basically the country to the Mexican army, first of all, because it is the last corrupt of all of the institution. Not saying they're not corrupt. They're just the less corrupt of all of the other institutions, only because of the structure that the military uh, is. You know, a state police or a local police is mostly more corrupted because you have commander, co commanders uh, having a lot of like leadership and doing shit on their own without having to respond somewhere higher, higher above. The military structure is you don't do shit unless you're instructed to. And they're very harsh on that, right? So the, the, usually a street soldier won't take money from you to let you go. But his um, commandante probably will, or, 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 or the sargento, or the one who's controlling the region, right? He's going to take the big bucks, not just 200 pesos or 200 bucks, probably 200,000, depending on what you do. This is why the Mexican military is not as corrupt as every other corporation, not because they're better, just because of their hierarchy, right? Um, so yeah, guys, I mean, this is, this is happening just across the border. This is also going to start some conversation again by these actors in the U.S. who just want to bring the, Mexica, the U.S. Army to fight Mexican drug cartels. Problematic stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through some of your comments. I see a lot of you um, uh, popping in with uh, with some with some comments. Um, yeah, that was a 50 uh, Duncan uh, allegedly by the by the what what the article says it was a, a 50. Uh, George Langley clearly force is being used without restraint. Julian Rivas, you were very critical of abrazos no balazos. Now that has gone out the window here. If it were the other way around, the sicarios wouldn't even care. There are people too, they get fed up with them too. Absolutely, Julian, that's literally what, I, what I'm saying. Like, I mean, yes, I mean, abrazos no balazos, it's like, dude, yeah, but in this case in particular, it's not as simple as just hug them and not shoot, right? Blue Vandal, good morning, brother. Were they civilians or, or part of an organization? Uh, Guerrilla, I, I'm not sure. We're not sure. They seem to be part of an organization, and if they are armed, heavily armed people on that region, uh, we will presume they are members of a cartel. Either way, they were unlawfully, illegally armed. Nick Jenkins, good morning as always. Thanks for your videos. Thanks, brother. 
George Lang, it doesn't matter who they are, with or not with. El Canal de Mandin, they took weapons from the vehicle. They did not plant them. They probably shot at the soldiers during the chase before the crash. Yep, that was allegedly what happened. Um, Julian Rivas, I get their authority and they're set at a higher standard, but Mexico has stopped being normal a long time ago. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Duncan, sometimes soldiers overreach their orders, but it, is it wrong if these were players? That, that's exactly my question, guys. Is it wrong? I mean, did they actually did wrong? I'm not sure. I, I know they did something extrajudicial, right? Like outside the law, outside their power. But I, don't, I, I can't find another answer to solve this shit or how they will act, right? Miki Lasok, welcome as a level compa, brother. I really appreciate you becoming a member of the channel where you're going to find some uh, exclusive footage. But also, most importantly, is you are a true supporter to this channel, man. And thanks a lot for that donation. Really appreciate it, man. This is making a huge difference to me on bringing you this sort of news and not only putting my face every morning here, but also um, reading out and trying to be, you know, raw and true to you guys. Because I, I don't want to I don't want to put out lies and say, like, what is proper to say? What is, you know, like good to say? This is my opinion. From the UK, Michael Lockley Lewis. Thanks a lot, brother. Really appreciate it. Lionel, need opinion playing tickets. Um, too expensive, need to get to a funeral. Big hello from Scotland, we say, guys. So yeah, well, th this, this, these, are, these are the news breaking up on, on Mexican media today. I'm pretty sure that we're gonna have a follow-up um, pretty soon. Want to understand Mexico? Well, try to untangle what happened on this video. This, this, is, this is how you solve Mexico, right? What is the army supposed to do if not shooting criminals? What are these criminals supposed to do if not saying the army overstepped their power. What is the Mexican civilians supposed to do if it's not, you know, congratulate the army for actually killing some fucking criminals that have been killing them for, for years? What is the press supposed to do? That's my biggest question. What should the press do? How sh should we as journalists approach this? Well, with the truth. And the truth is the Mexican civilian population is at hurt by these criminal organizations and i don't know guys probably the an eye for an eye um thing is a good thing for mexico not sure not sure if that's gonna be hard or harsh to say and it's gonna backlash you know so 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 yeah guys let's jump into the next segment because we've been over 30 minutes on the first segment which is major major news Next segment is also, it's also sad news from Mexico, sad news for all of us, sad news for the world that wants to keep traveling to these beautiful beaches in Mexico. This, um, this upcoming segment is developing in Cancun, one of the most internationally known tourist um, destinations in Mexico. One of the most beautiful beaches, right? A woman called Ornella Saui, Sayu, She's from Italy. She's been living in Cancun for the last 20 years. She worked at a local cafe in Playa del Carmen, beautiful beach. She was doing her regular life. But on May 30, these three men were about to watch on screen. These three guys entered the cafe where she was working and shot at her from a short distance according to authorities. Again, when we think about what we just saw, are we going to believe that these three men are the actual responsible for that hit? Now, even if they are, they're probably just the ones who pulled the trigger, right? Who ordered the hit. She is an Italian national. She is basically a tourist. She had the Mexican residence, but still, was she in some kind of shit? Probably not. Or probably yes, who the fuck knows? But even though we're talking about Italian murder inside the cafe where she was working in Playa del Carmen in the middle of the day, these places, these beaches like Playa del Carmen, Cancun, Tulum, are getting hit hard with violence. Why? Because it's a fucking mess. 
Not only because of Mexican drug cartels like in any other place. Like, let's talk about Nuevo Laredo. Well, you have different factions of the same uh, cartel fighting the military and fighting between each other. But Tulum, Playa del Carmen, Cancun have a different dynamics. First of all, the local drug market is huge. Driven, of course, by international tourists getting to these uh, beaches, trying to party and getting super expensive drugs. This is a major market for local drug distribution. You need, in order to sell drugs, you need control, you need to get the drugs, you need to have a lot of uh, suppliers and a lot of sellers in the streets, but also you need a banking or money laundering system that often goes into most of these shops. This is putting immediately at risk to all the tourists trying to have fun because a lot of these hotels are laundering money. A lot of the uh, restaurants are laundering money. A lot of the um, tour companies are laundering money. So they're laundering money all over because there's a lot of money put in. But also you have some other international mafias like the Albanian mafia, the Romanian mafia. You have these, um, I think it's a Vietnamese mafia based out of Canada, but also with a strong presence in, in this region. And then, of course, you have Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. You have the Cartel de Sinaloa right there. You have the Cartel de Juarez with strong presence in Cancun. Um, it's a fucking mess. That also, how do you untangle that mess? Well, the victims are sometimes innocent people like this Italian woman who was literally shot at while she was working in a cafe. We've seen other cases where tourists are being targeted. Why? Probably extortion, probably kidnap attempts, probably they're in some shit, probably they're, they, they did some wrong. But again, these are places with widespread violence and at the same time a campaign to keep tourists going to these beaches. The Mexican government recently put out soldiers, members of the National Guard, armed, heavily armed, to watch over these beaches. So now you can be out on the beach taking the sun and then watching a convoy of armed Mexican National Guard members walk right in front of you. That's, that's absolutely insane. This is what is happening in Mexico right now. And again, this puts a hot, spot, a hot spot into Mexican tourism, right? It's hard to tell you how to travel to these places safely when you have this kind of shit happening. Now, the authorities are congratulating, congratulating themselves because they say, well, we found the responsibles, right? They flee to uh, Veracruz, nearby state, and then we investigated and found these three men that were responsible for killing her. But they, they said it was a direct hit. It was something that was planned beforehand. But they still haven't shared what was the reason or alleged reason for the hit. Which, again, probably we don't care. What, all we care is that this shouldn't be happening, especially if you want to attract tourists to places like Playa del Carmen, Cancun, or Tulum. Let's go to the... Uh, Last section of this, your daily broadcast with cool news, crazy news, bad news, all of it. Let's watch some other videos, shocking videos from another region of our beautiful Latin America. So what we're seeing here is members, alleged members, of what it's called the Comando Vermelho. Red Comando in Brazil. This happened in Brazil in one of the most popular cities, Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This is the backlash from alleged members of this commando in one of the favelas against the Brazilian National Police. They literally threw grenades 
and Molotov cocktails against these vehicles until they absolutely destroy them, trying to stop them from coming in further into the favelas. Weeks earlier, they had killed a man called David Odilon Carvalho de Oliveira. He was allegedly one of the leaders for the Comando Vermelho operating at this favela in, uh, in Rio de Janeiro. The Comando Vermelho, it's a, it's, a, it's a crazy and interesting organization. First of all, because Brazil seems to be a region that has nothing to do with Latin America, but at, but at the same time, it does. Re most recently, the, um, one of the candidates for Bra the Brazilian uh, uh, presidency wanted to take kind of like the U.S. First Amendment in place, right? Everybody should arm themselves, which is interesting. An interesting approach got very popular for, for that. Didn't end up happening. But then again, it's probably, it's probably a solution. Would that be a solution in places like Brazil or Mexico? Brazil has a widespread violence as well presence of different criminal organizations that are working with other criminal organizations in Paraguay and are indirectly connected to Mexican drug cartels, but not directly. I think Mexican drug cartels haven't yet found a particular interest in, or interest or strong interest in uh, the Brazil region, but in places like Paraguay, Ecuador, Uruguay, Costa Rica, they're finding some more interesting and then, um, yeah, showing up with more power. Now, Comando Vermelho is interesting because it formed back in the 70s. They're fighting mostly the PCC, which is another of uh, the, um, of the yeah, criminal organizations operating there. But the Comando Vermelho has a mix of street gang members, of drug traffickers, but also some former guerrilla members of a communist guerrilla group uh, formed uh, during the 60s and, 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 uh, and, the, and that ended up on this criminal organization. They do have some heavy fucking weaponry right there, and it's probably not coming from the U.S. This is probably coming mostly from Europe and other South American countries. Now, the video, I think it's interesting because it shows that a region that we all seldom speak about is also having or putting heavy violence against their own military police. Now, the difference is that, that most of these criminal organizations are still labeled gangs and probably not cartels, but they are settled in slums, right, in these favelas. They, they, they are, for the most part, outcast. Where, where in Mexico, they're among us. Mexico and the U.S., because a lot of them live in the U.S. This is where they get their weapons, and this is where they get their connections, right? So, guys, let me go back to your comments after reading this last part of this um, a bit long newscast. Mikey Lasso, beers on me, Luis. I love your work, brother. Man, I really, really appreciate your support. Again, thanks. Thanks, guys, for all of you who's, who's, uh, who are showing up with support, who are becoming members of the channel, who are hitting the um, support button for Luis Chaparro, the super thing or super like button. Eddie was just in Playa del Carmen last week. It was the first time I was approached ask, asking if I wanted to buy cocaine or marijuana. That's very common in those places. And you need to be aware of um, who is offering that shit and how's the deal about to go, you know? I'm not saying don't do it, because of course, it's always fun. They have some good product uh, down there, uh, very expensive shit, but you, you, you have to know how to, how to deal with, with these guys, right? Um, Duncan Patterson, well, Lionel, oh yeah, Lionel is saying that he's looking for a route to Durango. And Duncan is saying, well, try to take the oldest, most nondescript truck you can. And if you get back with it, say it as a bonus. I think you're best crossing as far as west possible. Uh, you're going to try to take the Sonora route. Well, yeah, man, be safe. Don't drive at night. Um, if you run into a checkpoint, legal or illegal, or if you are in doubt, just do these couple of recommendations. Put both of your hands on the wheel. Turn on all the lights on your vehicle and lower all of your windows and slow down. If you see what we usually called a, um, 
soldado con tenis, soldier using sneakers, uh, stop. Don't, don't try to flee. Don't, don't try to flee these guys. If they want to stop you while driving on a highway, let knock on wood, hopefully it doesn't, doesn't, that's not your case, doesn't happen. If, that, if that's the case, man, if you are uh, in places like Sonora, Chihuahua, Durango, Sinaloa, probably the best option is to stop. If you are in the northeast part of Mexico, don't, don't, don't stop. Try to get to safe before stopping. You have better chances. Um, Mike Lazy, when you live again, Luis, I also have you and Shadow every week without fail. Well, I'm live every single morning from Monday to Friday, my man. I'm, I'm putting on the hard work to keep you guys informed beyond a weekly video. Um, and I really want to, um, you know, push these videos forward, guys. Um, hopefully, with the help of you guys, we keep, uh, we'll, we'll keep the, the number of people showing up to these live um, popping up, spiking. Because right now, the, the counts are still pretty low. I just started doing this a month ago. Um, I hope it picks up. Um, also, by all means, uh, I'll be happy to read all your recommendations. All sorts of news, keep it up, bro. Awesome work. Thanks again, man. Um, Happy, uh, happy Wednesday. It was really cool to see you, or meet you in person the other day, man. Really appreciate also all the information you're putting out there on Twitter. Um, AX, big shout out from Scotland. Keep up the great work. Thanks, man. Uh, saludos to Scotland. Johnny Gonzalez, what's up, compalis? What's up, my brother? I hope you guys are doing well. And, well, again, this was the end of this uh, live newscast about news about narcos. Make sure you rewatch that video. Let me on your comments. Let me know what do you think Mexico should do. Was this actually a good action by the Mexican army taking out these guys, or should the Mexican army respect the law? And if they had already controlled the situation, have these men handcuffed and shit? Should have, should they have stopped um, shooting at these guys? I don't know. Leave your comments on this video and see you guys tomorrow, Thursday, for a next live cast with more news about Narcos.